This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win. Hello there guys and welcome to this painting tutorial for Rune Wars. Um, what I'm going to be doing in this one is one of the spearmen so you can check under close cam and we'll have a little look around our spearmen. Now I already have them primed, I've checked over for a few mold lines, took the worst away. Um, wasn't too many in this one to be honest. There's a couple still there but nothing major. And uh, I've already primed them, and I've primed them in Army Painter Ultramarine Blue. Simply because I'll be putting another layer of blue on, and I wanted, you know, a, a decent base uh, to start with. So, the idea and the premise behind these tutorials is how, you know, how quick can we do it? So it's going to be a bit of a speed paint. Um, but trying to do a few vital lessons in keeping things neat. Uh, blocking out your colours especially once they're neat and you've got a good coat on them that's exactly what you're aiming for so we'll be starting off with um, all the leather work and all the, the the deeper details so all the leather work and all that sort of stuff for that if we go under here the first thing I'll be doing is using some leather brown and you see I've actually upgraded my life into a wet palette so let's just get some leather brown out and get my brush And what I'm going to be starting off doing, if we go under camera here again, is just anything here that looks like it isn't um, metal or armor. So let's start. Um, let's start up here. Okay, and we'll just start putting blocking out. Our, and the idea of blocking out the colors is that while speed painting, you want to make sure that the colors are nice and tidy. Uh, so that when we come to the wash step, everything will tie in nice, and the wash should settle really well. Now, at least at this stage, when you're working with this color, you know, being one of the first colors you're putting on, you don't have to worry too much about um, putting paint somewhere you don't necessarily want it, because the layer's on top. When you figure the, the sequence of paints right, you'll find that you're actually tidying up the previous layer as you apply the next one. That's, that's the theory. There, I think that's all right. So that's our first color down. Not bad. So I'm going to wash my brush off and we'll get stuck into the second color. And for that, I'm going to be applying my second layer of blue over the primer. We're using Viking blue. So again, this is quite a nice rich color. I, I like crystal blue as well, but this just has a more interesting, well, a more vibrant tone, I think. Uh, in effect. So and it, this this is very similar to crystal blue I would say, but there's just something a touch more regal about it. Something just drew my eye to this colour. So we'll start with the shield and then I, I think it's going to need a second coat. So we go and do the rest of the armor, which should only take one coat. And then we'll revisit this. I was looking through the, the Rune Wars um, books and stuff in the box just to, to see what sort of colors they were going for. And I'm pretty much going for the, the standard-ish standard sort of scheme that they had in the book. The good guys were very bright and vibrant, and the bad guys were a bit um, more muted. So I think we're going to aim for that. Work to your advantage a little bit. It'll be keeping certain things in more shadow. The shadow in this case being pretty much the primer color. So, you know, the back of the shield, for example, I'm not going to put another layer of paint onto that. I'm going to keep that as a, a darker, a more muted blue, uh, the ultramarine blue. Sorry, keep it in a bit of shadow. It adds a bit of contrast to it. At this point, some people would leave it to dry. We're speed painting, so we're not going to be doing that. Uh, we'll move straight on to our next color. We're going to be using uh, Brain Matter Beige. So just an off-white. I think that's going to be quite striking as well. There we go. And we'll get stuck back in with our brush. And let's start with this front piece here. 
Now, because you've got wet paint around you, just be a little more cautious. When you're doing this. What I would like to do at this point is just remind everyone that there's a lot of paint on here and it's not quite dry yet. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is step back, let it dry, and once it's dry, off camera, I'm going to add maybe another layer of this, uh, of the colour we've just been doing, uh, which is the Brain Matter Beige. I'm just going to solidify that colour up a little bit because it looks like it could take maybe two or three coats. But it's worth a try just to get that colour down solid. And when I come back, we'll look at wrapping up because we have three more colours to add. Off camera, I've added another layer of blue and another layer of the white. And we can see now that the colours are far smoother and looking a lot better. Now, the next one I want to do is just tackle the skin real quick. So, the only skin there is is just in around the faceplate. So for that, I'm using cobalt skin. Let's get in there and get his face. And after that, we can move on uh, to some metallics. So right in here, let's start. I think that will do for the first layer anyway. We may need to give that another coat later on, or we'll just cover it up with some highlighting after the wash step. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is work on the metallics. So there's a couple of metallics I want to pick out, the silvers and golds. The golds are going to be on the, the edges of the armor plate, the actual big heavy plates that he's wearing. The silvers are going to be on the likes of what I'm calling the scale mail, down just below. The, the shoulder plates and around just below the, the belly plate there as well. So for that, I'm using uh, plate mail metal. So it's quite, quite a shiny one, but not the most shiny that we have. We'll start with the, the plate mail down around the bottom at the back here. Or sorry, yeah, start down here. And all we're really aiming to do is make sure that the the lighter colour and the metal match and they don't leave any primer colour in between them. Okay. Pretty good. Alright, so we'll move down onto the underarm pieces. So just all this stuff underneath this plate and it goes right underneath the arm to sort of almost a shirt or a chinnick I'm just going to take the silver up to the edge just where the, the gold will be meeting it in the next layer I think we'll do the spear silver too but we'll not give it the same, in fact we may not give it any highlight after the wash step so we'll just We'll just totally base coat the spear because it has some wrap around it, and I think we'll we'll come back to that with uh, some of the Viking blue after the wash step, perhaps. In fact, we'll take it up to here, just to the the guard of the weapon, and then we'll do that in the gold. So on to the golds. Now obviously this is going to be lining the helmet and all the big uh, major armour sections. And for this I've chosen Greedy Gold. So it's a, a very nice colour, very rich gold. Looks excellent too, it does. It's a really nice colour. And I think, yeah, I think this brush will still be okay for it. Don't want to change down too much. So let's start on the shield. So we're going to work from the edge
We'll start from there. The main thing really is when you're painting fast is to get the lines as neat as possible. And if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can change, you can add another layer. You know, don't consider one little mess at the end of the model. Because, for example, I mean, that's not the neatest work. But if you stick a wash on that, it'll probably be okay. Not the best. In fact, do you know what? Just fill that in. Just fill that in. If we think we can't do it right with the brush we currently have, just 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 fill it in. It'll be alright. The the rest of the lining is pretty small and delicate, so I'm gonna change brush. I've currently been using a Wargamer detail brush. And we're going to have to go down a size here. Let's start in the helmet. So from the front of the faceplate. I think he may have got a little touch of gold paint on his nose. So something like that on the knee, I quite like that. Just makes him look a little, quite a, quite a bit more regal actually. Uh, don't want to take it down further than that. I think I do, because there's a little bit of lining right at the bottom of the shin plate here. The other leg's a bit more of a problem because there's a thigh plate in there that's got a lovely big line on it. It makes the armour look very segmented and very heavy, which is appealing to me. Not going to be overly subtle with it. Again, we're spending too long. Well, we're spending long enough blocking colors out that once we do the wash, the model could potentially be called finished. I mean, for me, you <laughs> you you paint until you're satisfied, not anyone else. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. To be honest with you, I can teach you basic techniques. I can show fairly rough speed painting there are people on youtube and that that can do it better than me but that's their approach that's not my approach i'm happy to approach this as a purist gamer and going i want something that looks good from three feet away not three inches or two inches depending on how close you really want to get to it and that's that's always been my philosophy that's why my skill models will always look like they've had a lot more time put into them because they do and my wargaming stuff is i just want it on the table and that is the premise of a lot of the painting tutorials I've done over my time. So that's how I approach things. So now I've left the model for a, a couple of minutes, uh, maybe about five to ten minutes, just to make sure the paint I'd put on last was the stuff that was dry. And it is now time for the wash step. This is going to make the model look horrifying, but don't worry, it'll be fine. So for this, I'm using... Uh, the Army Painter is Strong Tone, so it's like a darker brown, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's basically a darker brown, and uh, I was considering using a soft tone, or you know, even going darker than that, like an actual dark tone, but I think this one is one that I seem to fall back to a lot when I'm painting at home, and it's just a generally quite a good wash, so let's apply some and see what we get, so let's start with the shield, shall we? What you're looking for this to do is to darken everything a little bit 
get into the recesses like it is on the shield. Oh, a bit heavier on this side. But don't let it pull too much in areas you don't want it to, so like the bottom of the shield or anything like that. I want to make sure that it gets in around the rivets on the shield too. The strong tone works really well with anything on the brown scale. It almost immediately shades it to nearly exactly what you want it to do. Now there isn't an exact science to applying wash apart from don't go too heavy but at the same time go heavy. <laughs> so it's a, it's a matter of taste really how heavy you want the wash to go on so long as you make sure that it doesn't start to puddle and pull in areas that you don't want it to. I'm going to avoid the the blade of the spear because I want it to be a lot cleaner uh, than the rest. I want it to look particularly bright against the rest of the miniature, even after we do the next layer after our um, wash here. Warren and all that will tell you the more detailed a model is, the wash will help the model almost paint itself. Now I agree with that philosophy, but at the same time a model that has very simple details like this, the wash really accentuates the shapes and the edges of stuff a lot more easily than a, a complex model with a lot more detail in it. So you will almost feel like it's got a more comic book style to it because it will have the, the wash settling in places where the lines will be more defined than if you had, for example, a model that had very fine detail but had a lot of it. You would get that detail and it would be visible and it would be beautiful. But at the same time, it wouldn't have the same presence I suppose, in a, in a manner of speaking, it doesn't have the same presence uh, than a model like this when it's given a good wash. All right, so that is the wash on, and you immediately see that shadow just boom, that, that shading just appears, and it really stops the, the model looking like a board game toy and really starts to make it look like what it should be, like this warrior that's got all this heavy gear on, and he's got his weapon and everything has a heft to it, has a, a heaviness, a weight. Once this is dry and we start to bring up highlights in certain places, that is when the model will finally pop. And then when you give all of that a, a coat of anti-shine varnish, everything settles down. The, the shading looks less stark because sometimes the, the washes can dry not quite matte, but not quite gloss, so a sort of satiny in, in between. When you get a layer of varnish, it just kills all of that down, brings it to the same level of shine, which is practically nil. And then you have a really decent looking gaming miniature. Okay, now at this point, you can see that the miniature is mostly dry and the shading has taken rather well. Uh, it's left the shield a little bit dirty, but I don't think that's a major problem either. Now, the idea is from this point, we do layering. So we add another color on top. So they say lay layering so you'd add a couple of thin coats or something to bring the brightness back up. I'm only going to try and do it with one layer. Uh, so a thin-ish coat of something a little bit brighter um, just into the, the areas where I want a bit more detail, a bit more highlighting to make the model pop. For that, I've selected a range of paints out of the same range, obviously from Army Painter. So just the slightly higher tones that they had in their boxes are in their range just a slight tone higher than what the, the base colors were. So let me see, for example, what we did start with the browns was leather brown. And from that, we're going to highlight with monster brown. So there's a slight difference to it. So it'll be, again, six colors we'll try to highlight with. And of course, we're going to start with our monster brown. And this is going to highlight all the leather detail up. So I'm just going to put some of that onto my palette. And I'm going to use the cycle brush for this. I'm just going to use a smaller, the smaller brush. So I want to get straight in and do all these lines and stuff in here. So yeah, pretty much that. And just picking any of the raised areas.
So just anything to add that layer of detail that the wash mostly mutes out. Just, just something in there that just adds a bit more depth. So that'll do for the brown. We can then move on to the blue. Now for the original blue, we did Viking blue over the primer. Uh, for the highlight, we're using crystal blue. Again, I'm just going to use the cycle brush. I'm going to water it down a little bit more actually and just do it almost as a, a proper layer because the, the areas that have the blue are quite extensive and you don't want them to, to look streaky in a manner. So let's start in the shoulder pad up here first, so up here. What this layer is basically going to do is just make it look a little less dirty than what it already is. And of course when you come to the, the battle damage zones, just ignore those. Just let the let the tone, let the wash keep that there and make it look more apparent. So where the battle damage is, just ignore it. And you want to focus the, the highlight on the center of the panels. So don't let it get too close to the edging. Let that shading do its job. Again, let, don't put too much down, just let the shading do its job. And on the top of the, the boot, I'm just going to touch the top of the boot. Because it's pulled a bit too much there and I don't want it to be just so dark. You can already see the difference that this is making and I'm, I'm really happy that the model is actually starting to pop. And yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty well. So we want to start up here. I'm going to take some paint off my brush. We want to work into the helmet. And tighten up the shading. There's a little bit of a battle damage line there, so we want to ignore that. Front of the helmet here. Again, trying to just keep it away from the banding. I'm also trying to keep it in focus for you. If any, if nothing else, it's just cleaning the finish a little bit. I think we'll only take that to like there. Let that battle damage talk for itself a bit. I think that's enough for the blue. It works particularly well on the leg plates and on the, the torso and the helmet. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's get some of it onto the brush. I'm really only looking to touch the very edges of this, I think. So let's say from the front here, I want to take the top of the creases. Like that. And there, there's one. And something like that works kind of well. And then further around here. I think that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Certainly a bit brighter anyway. We have to highlight the skin. Now the skin's going to be quite easy because there's not a lot of it on showing up. So I'm going to tell you again. Uh, we first used cobalt 
which is you know fairly standard skin color and now I'm going to use corpse pale so it's a much more pinky sort of lighter color and this is simply going to be to accentuate the likes of the chin and the nose get our tiny little brush again I think maybe I have too much paint there something like that and down at the bottom of the chin sort of frame the bottom of the face a little bit and then this lip and then this lip frame the bottom of the eyes so it's not much but it is defining the face a little bit maybe that nose is a bit too strongly highlighted there so we're now on to the metallics and for the metallics we started with um, let me see greedy gold and we're now moving on to bright gold which is a very high color and I think for this it's really going to be just a matter of hitting a couple of high detail areas and just highlighting those so let's look at the shield first so let's definitely do the rivets. A little bit of a highlight there. It's on the very upper edge. Like that. And then down this side where the, the light will be glinting a bit more. edge of the face mask or the face opening anyway like so okay and then we'll just highlight the upper part of the spear's blade as well while we're at it so just the cross guard there and there and a little bit up the middle and that should do that. Okay, so now we're starting to really see what this miniature can look like with a bit of highlighting in there. And I'm really starting to really appreciate the, the shape of it. Now, we have the silvers to highlight. Now, there's not a terrible amount of it, but it's going to be there and you're going to notice it anyway. So, <clears throat> we started with um, plate mail metal as the base color and we're moving up to shining silver and it will have quite a bright sheen to it so this is really just going to take um, the glint from the likes of the scale mill down around his waist so let's pick out bits just little bits So little lines or dots, anything that really starts to make it shine a bit more. At a distance, you'll still notice the change of materials being used in the model's makeup. The same in any areas of underneath the arm where we can catch a bit of a glint too what's nice is that the wash kind of shows those bits up for you so if you feel like it you can just focus on hitting those edges like that and it really does really does make the model pop doing that there is one or two more steps here so what I would like to do right now is take um, our base color which was Viking blue and I'm going to paint the the little bits on the spear just to give it a bit of color
I am very happy with how that's turned out. I think the shield looks clean but used. I think the armor has some really interesting highlights in there. And everything has some sort of color on it and some sort of definition on it. And that is what I would call a good tabletop model for me anyway. So guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this tutorial. The, the only other thing you'll want to do is paint the base black so that it matches onto the Rune Wars box, if you're not basing them that is. And then once you have them all painted, give them a spray of uh, Army Painter Anti Shine and you will have a fantastic looking Rune Wars box set. So this is the Spearman done. I'm going to move on and check out what else I need to do. But uh, until then, put your comments down below, let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one. This weekend we have three Army Painter Mega Paint sets up for grabs. Get your comments in on any of the Hobby Weekend live blog posts on beastofwar.com for your chance to win.